Zeki. Bring it right here. Your name. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi amma ba'du. Today is the uh, sixth day of Shawwal and um, we're going to resume inshallah with Durus Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday but before we do what we came to do today I was uh, contacted by a number of brothers with um, a few questions that they had also with this issue of um, Paul who wants to embrace Al-Islam. So Paul, you're going to repeat after me. Very easy, okay? Come on, move your chair up, son. You're going to say, Paul, I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no God. That there is no God. Worthy of worship. Worthy of worship. Except Allah. Except Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Muhammad. Muhammad is his prophet and his messenger. Is his prophet and messenger. Is Allah's prophet and Allah's messenger. Is Allah's prophet and Allah's messenger. And I bear witness that Jesus. And I bear witness that Jesus, the son of Mary, the son of Mary, is the word from Allah. Is the word from Allah that was given to his mother Mary. That was given to his mother Mary. And the spirit from Allah. And the spirit from Allah. And I bear witness that the paradise is true. And I bear witness that the paradise is true. And the hellfire is true. And that hellfire is true. So with that, this brother Paul, he became a Muslim, inshallah, when he walked up before he even took the shahada, he said to me, "Salamu alaikum. So I think that already Islam, he had the need of being a Muslim, but this is a shahada that's officially, inshallah, going to go in his records, in his record. So may Allah Ta'ala accept it from, take it easy, be balanced, and stay around balanced brothers like this brother right here, inshallah, and the other brothers who are connected to him, all right? Anything we can help you with, Paul, just don't hesitate to let us know. Stay balanced, stay easy, okay? All right, man. Inshallah, as we're maybe you could give congratulations, give some love to brother Paul. No doubt, no doubt, Paul, no doubt, man. Yeah, man, sure. Nuruddin, how you been? You made the Eid here in Birmingham. Oh, yeah. Anta salayta ma'ana kathalik. Taqabbar Allah minna wa minna. Awallah, alhamdulillah, bakhayr. Yeah, I saw it. The Mutahm, the Awal, the Thani, the Khamis, the Sadis. The Sheikh, who is a very good in his hujjah, but the Tasjil did not have a lot of people. He was a very good in his hujjah. And the Tasjil did not have a lot of people. But the Tasjil did not have a lot of people.
We have a few questions, Juani, that came to us from the community members that were connected mostly with uh, some things about Ramadan and Shawwal and uh, Dua. I'm going to answer these questions very briefly and then open up the door for any questions you brothers may have. The most common question that came from brothers and sisters was the question about fasting the six days of Shawwal if for whatever reason a person did not complete his or her Ramadan due to her period, Akramukumullah, or someone was sick, or they traveled and they chose not to fast. So they didn't fast Ramadan 29 days as it was this past year. Now is it permissible for them to fast Shawwal without having the need of just fasting Shawwal and they get Ramadan in whenever they want to get Ramadan in. Scholars of Islam had ikhtilaf in this issue, and one of the main lessons of Ramadan is that we should learn how to have ikhtilaf and to deal with each other with this ikhtilaf. Some of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them, started the fast on the day that they saw the hilal, and others said we're not going to start the fast because we didn't see the hilal in our locale. So they had ikhtilaf in that issue, and it's not an issue to be fighting over. Some of the companions said that Laylatul Qadr was on the 23rd. Some said it was on the 25th. Some swore that it was the 27th. And we don't find them fighting over when the actual day of Laylatul Qadr happens to be. The same thing is with breaking the fast. These issues of ikhtilaf. This masjid says 11 rakat. The other masjid says 20 rakat. No problem. Both sides, they have the delil. Some people said that to pray the taraweeh and then at the end of the night to pray more prayers, that is an innovation. And some scholars took that position and that opinion. And others said, no, you can pray as much as you want on any given night of Ramadan or other than Ramadan. So the point is, the etiquette of ikhtilaf and not being intolerant in issues of ikhtilaf. So there is ikhtilaf in this issue, but it seems, and Allah knows best, that the strongest position, Allahu A'lam, is that the person has to complete his days of Ramadan before he can get the reward of fasting the days of Shawwal. And that's due to the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Ala Ali Wasallam, who said in the authentic hadith, Man Sama Ramadana Thumma Atba'ahu bi sitam in Shawwal, Fakanama Sama Dahr. Anyone who fasted the month of Ramadan and then he followed up Ramadan with six days of Shawwal, it is as if he has fasted the whole year. So that shows the virtues of fasting the month of Shawwal and it also shows that Shawwal has to be done after Ramadan is complete because he said, whoever fasted Ramadan... And then he followed Ramadan up with six days. So if a person missed three days, four days, five days, seven days, one day of Ramadan, he hasn't completed Ramadan. So he didn't get the condition that has been set. And in the Arabic language, we have men sama. So this goes to show whoever does this thing, he has to do it with the tartib. So some people said no. If for some reason you didn't fast and you wanted to do it at another time, so if you didn't fast all of Ramadan and you wanted to get the days of Shawwal in, then it's permissible because your niyat will be judged. And plus Aisha radiallahu anha, she used to make up her days in Ramadan in the month of Sha'ban, the month right before Ramadan. She said she used to be busy with taking care of the affairs of the sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa sallam. We say, no, this is not the case. She couldn't do it, she couldn't do it. La yukallifullahu nafsin illa wus'aha, just as the imam read. Second question, Ikhwani, was the question of, is it permissible for a person when he fasts the days of shawwal, can he have the niyyah of fasting the days he missed in Ramadan and the six days of shawwal? So he missed three days of Ramadan, and he wants to fast the six days of Shawwal. So he says, okay, I'm going to start fasting today, and he fasted today, 
he counts it as the one day he missed from Ramadan and the first day of Shawwal. Is this something that's permissible? The same answer from this first question is the answer to the second question, inshallah. And that is because the Prophet وسلم, connected Shawwal to the completion of Ramadan. So the individual, before he can put one ibadah inside of another ibadah, he has to have proof for that, number one. And it can't be some condition that is connected to either one of the ibadah from the ibadat that he's trying to make idkhal hadihi bitilk. So you can't make this ibadah go inside of that ibadah without some delil. And you can do it if that particular ibadah, one of the other one, it has some condition that's been stipulated like the one that we just mentioned. Anyone who fasts the month of Ramadan, thumma at he followed it up after that. He followed it up after that with six of Shawwal. He never completed the fast of Ramadan, so therefore his psalm of Ramadan has to be independent. It has to have istiqlal. It's just all by itself. And then after that, he can continue. And that's because there's a condition of Ramadan. As for other days, no problem. If a person missed days for Ramadan and he wants to fast a day of Ramadan and do the day of Ashura, he'll get the reward of both of them. He'll get the reward of taking care of Ramadan and he'll get the reward of fasting Ashura because he fasted on that day. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anyone who fasts on the day of Ashura, it would be like his, it's a kafara for the previous year's sins. So he didn't put any conditions on him. He left it open in the general. Men sama ashura, anyone who fasts. He didn't say anyone who fasts except the one who is making up a day for Ramadan. He made another, an oath. He can fast that day of ashura. It's going to count for his another and it's going to count for the reward. Same thing for Arafat. He told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Anyone who fasts the day of Arafah, it will be an expiation, a kafara for the sins from the previous year and the sins that are going to come in the following year. So if he wants to fast Ramadan with those special days like that, because they are general, and the Prophet said it generally, no problem. But concerning the issue of Shawwal and the six days of Shawwal, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he made a condition. And that condition is he has to have completed the month of Ramadan, and Allah knows best. Another issue is about the number of days of the Eid al-Fitr. The Eid al-Fitr, how many days is it? The Eid al-Adha is for three days. Three days. The day that we pray the Eid, and then the following day, and then the third day. And we are encouraged to say the takbir and the tahlil for all of those days up until Salat al-Asr on the third day. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd, yarhamakullah. After Salat al-Asr, on that third day, you leave that tahlil that is from the sunnah of the days of al-Eid. So the people who didn't pray or who didn't perform al-Hajj, they're in their countries, they pray the Eid, and they do the next day and the next day. And for all three of those days, it's permissible for you to do your udhiyah. You didn't go to hajj, but you can slaughter on the first day. You can slaughter on the second day. You can slaughter on the third day. Because the pilgrims are doing the same thing where they are. So those are the three days of al-Eid. Whereas the zakat, the, the, the Eid al-Fitr is only one day. It's only one day. Eid al-Fitr is the day of the Eid. And then the very next day, you are allowed to fast after that. Someone said that the Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah ta'ala, and it's true, he was asked the question, can a person show his happiness for Eid al-Fitr for three days? And he said, yes, you can show the happiness for the Eid al-Fitr for three days. And he used as a delil the authentic hadith in Sal bukhari and Muslim that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in the home of Aisha. May Allah be pleased with her. And she had two young girls with her and they were singing songs. Abu Bakr came in and Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. When he heard them singing, he asked the question, 
are the flutes of shaitan being played close to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam a mazamir shaitan inda nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam you girls are singing the voices of shaitan like the flutes of shaitan and the prophet is here lying down facing the wall and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him leave them he told him leave them abu bakr leave them every people they have an aid and these are the days of aid for us so the sheikh said that the statement of the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he said these are the ayam al eid these are the days of al eid he said that goes to show that in the arabic language the plural the arabic language is three or more so if there are three or more then that's the plural we are sitting here one person is a rajul he's one man two is rajulan three or more is rijal that's one kitab two kitaban three a kutub so whenever you find the plural in the arabic language it's going to be three or more so he said these are the days ayamul eid so it goes to show that the eid can be more than three days but we don't accept that and we don't embrace that rahimahullah ta'ala because that particular hadith and that incident was referring to the eid al adha as some of the ulama said and there's some discussion concerning that So the Sheikh he made it clear that if an individual wants to show happiness for three days as that is the case in the Muslim world where there is officially three days for both eids he said it's permissible he said but the one who wants to show happiness for three days he can't say to an individual who wants to fast the next day like the eid was Friday here on Saturday a person wants to fast the person says you can't fast because Saturday is the Eid wallahi you can't fast is haram he said you can't say that you can't say that because everybody knows it's not permissible to fast on the day of the Eid so on Friday you can't fast for the Eid al Adha you can't fast any of those days it's not permissible so he made a distinction so we say based on that distinction that he himself acknowledged that a person can't say to someone that you can't fast the second day after fitr that's a delil it's not an eid so we respect we honor we uh take into consideration the statements and the positions of our ulama especially the ones from a long time ago and the ones who were present who are qualified and competent but we're not obliged and we're not obligated to follow people's opinions when they don't agree with the text or we're not convinced that's for everybody here so the eid of al fitr is one day and allah taala knows best another issue that khwani came up i don't know if you brothers i wasn't aware of this until today about one of the famous qura his name is a sheikh muhammad jibril who's from egypt he's from the famous qura in the dunya the reciters of the quran on the 27th night of ramadan past He did what he normally does every year and what he became famous for and that is he makes a long dua for al-qunut and people purchase his dua CDs just to listen to the dua sometimes it's about 30 minutes 45 minutes it can go to an hour over the years they've been very long and many people they cry as a result of the dua of the 27th night of Ramadan inshallah due to sincerity inshallah but the long dua of the qunut in ramadan has been described as being an innovation by many of the ulama of al-islam past and present there was a text message going around in the month of ramadan by the sheikh muhammad mukhtar al-shinqiti who is in medina hafizahullah ta'ala we were saying look at our umma where people who hear the recitation of a nice reciter and the people would say to each other did you hear his recitation he has a beautiful recitation and the focus and emphasis upon the voice and the recitation he said but very seldom will you see the muslim saying did you hear the ayat that was read tonight did you pay attention to that ayat that was read tonight the jewels the benefit of this particular ayat that was read tonight so it's upon things that are superficial or things that are important but there are other issues that are more important the voice is important 
but the meaning of the Quran and the kalam of Allah Azza wa Jal is more important. And this seems to be one of those issues. When it comes to the qunut, the dua, dua of witr, the Prophet's dua used to not be very long, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't say the dua in a way where he had tajweed, the way you do or the people do with the dua today. You read the Quran with tajweed. When you make al-qalqala and idhar and al-idgham, people who read those dua, they take the ahkam of tajweed and they put it inside of the dua, showing some sense of takalluf, efforts. I prayed in one of the masjids here. Behind two young brothers, mashallah, one of them is studying in Medina. They were very young, 20. One was 21. And their recitation was real nice. And the recitation was short. So if you wanted to pray with them, the salat was easy. And they didn't even finish a juz. And their recitation was beautiful. And mashallah, the way they were in ruku and qiyam and sajda. They were taking it easy and it was just nice praying in their masjid, in that particular masjid. But when we came to the dua of al-qunut, the imam took a long time. And the people were standing in the line, you could see that they were clearly agitated. And they were not happy. And they were huffing and puffing. So after the salat, I went to the brother and I thanked him for doing us ma'roof. Because we would not have been able to do that. He helped us to do that, to carry us through the prayer. The Prophet mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, after the salat, atwaluha qiyamin. The best prayer is when you stand up for a long time and you read a lot of the Quran. So they read long ayat, ayat that we would not have been able to do without them, by Allah's permission and with their efforts. So we thanked them for that. Then we told them, listen, you brothers, mashallah, you made the qira'a short. And that's the kalam of Allah. And the best speech is the kalam of Allah. Then when you came to the dua, the dua was long. It's against the sunnah, that thing. And it doesn't make sense about what we're trying to do in this masjid and make things easy on the community. And mashallah, to that brother's credit, that brother didn't become arrogant. He didn't become haughty. He didn't become upset. He just said, can I have your number and can you send that to me, some of those fatwas? And he was convinced that what was said, but he wanted to have it in his own possession. So we ask Allah Azza wa to accept it from that brother and to make him from the Qur'a and the Anwar, the lights that are going to be in this area that will help us to continue, inshallah, to spread the sunnah. And I found that in a number of masjids, like that masjid in, Stetch, in Stetchford, the Gambian brothers' masjid. Because of Allah Azza wa and the efforts of the brothers who are giving dawah to the sunnah in an easy way soft way, calm way. The elders over there who are affected with Sufism, the Sufism that's not from the religion, the Sufism of Ghulu, the Sufism of Bida, the Sufism of Shirk and Kufr even. Those elders who are affected by that, when these younger brothers were dealing with their community in an easy way, a soft way, a gentle way, now when someone comes and says to them, this is correct or this is not correct, they don't argue with you. They accept it and they say, can you bring me that information? And this is what we, inshallah ta'ala, encourage all of the brothers who are trying to give dawah to the kitab and the sunnah. We encourage all of you to be upon that. All of us, without any exception. So the dua of the Sheikh Hamid Jibril is not from the sunnah. So the Sheikh was arrested no, he wasn't arrested. From what I heard is that he was prevented from traveling. He can't lead any salat. And now everybody is afraid that he's going to be arrested. So a lot of text messages are going around. And this is how it came to my attention that they may arrest him. But the people are saying he's a hero and things like that. I say that dua is a dua that is not what we should be doing. That's the first thing. Second of all, not getting into mursi and the vulm of mursi or the vulm of Sisi, the one who's in charge of Egypt, not getting into making khuruj against the imam, and not even getting into that. Making khuruj against the leader of the Muslims, Sisi, the leader of Egypt, not even getting into that. I always ask the question, when we do things like that, and you get arrested, you get stopped from giving dawah, and these types of things, they happen, what did you do after that? What's going to happen after that? 
after the 27th of Ramadan, nothing is going to change. The leader of Egypt is going to remain who he is. Your long dua is not going to change anything of the reality of the people in terms of the Muslims are going to go back to the same thing that they were doing and so forth and so on. People would applaud you for a day or two and say you're a hero and you're a batal and that you're brave and shuja. That's going to happen. But what about your dawah now? What about your dawah? So again, the Ram Minhaj, it doesn't benefit. Some people were even saying this is the epitome and the example of the hadith of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best jihad is giving the dawah to uh, the, 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 the karimatul haqq to the oppressor in his face. This is not the karim of al-haq because in the dua, they said, I didn't hear the dua, that he was making dua against the leader, making dua against the government, making dua against the ulama who support that government, making dua and the people were saying, I mean, I mean, I mean, for 45 minutes to an hour. It's no benefit. It's no benefit. So that dua, ikhwani, is a dua that's against the sunnah and if Allah is is being worshipped with bid'a, shirk, Masiyah, it's not going to work because Allah is pure, He's tayyib, and He only accepts what is pure. I'm not doubting and I'm not delving into anyone's niyyah, not the lead, the Imam, or the people who are saying I mean behind him. But it's not from al hikmah. It's not from al hikmah. Last issue, khwani, is the issue of the dua of the people. Can I say that that dua is not accepted in this? This is not my business, it's not your business, it's not my job, it's not anyone's job to say that Allah is going to accept anyone's dua, not accept anyone's dua. Allah may accept the dua of a sinner, and he may reject the dua of a righteous person. The acceptance of the dua of the righteous person, that's the asal, that's the asal, that's the norm. But the dua is the property of Allah, it's his issue. So if a righteous person makes dua, it's up to Allah to accept it or not. No one can say just because he's righteous, Allah accepts it. He's doing everything right. No, that's not your job. And Allah can also reject the du- accept the dua. He can accept the dua of a sinner. And that's not the asl. The asl is that the dua of the sin is rejected. Allah didn't accept his dua because he was nourished with what was haram. He ate haram, drank haram, wore haram. He did things that were haram. So, anna yustajabu lahu. How is Allah going to accept his dua? So the acceptance of a dua is not a proof of a person's salah and taqwa. But that is the asl. And the rejection of the dua is not a proof of the person's fasad and fisq. That is the asl. Allah does what he wants to do in these particular issues. Proof of that. Or many. One of the books that many people were sending text messages from in the month of Ramadan is a book that was written by Imam Ibn Rajab, who was the student of Ibn Taymiyyah. And we made reference to this book about when he spoke about the 15th of Sha'ban. The book is called Lata'if and Ma'arif. Lata'if and Ma'arif. And it's a book that was written in which he is telling the Muslim, you do this in the month of Muharram. You do this in the month of Dhul Qada. You do this in the month of Dhul Hijjah. You do this in the month of Rajab. Bring in ayahs of the Quran and a hadith and the actions of the Salaf. The month of Sha'ban, he mentioned for the 15th of Sha'ban, some of the Salaf, especially those people who were from a Sham, from the Tabi'een, they used to turn down and turn off their candles and they used to pray in the masjid, in jama'at, with the candles cut off. I mentioned that during Ramadan because some people may incar on this masjid for turning the lights down. I think it's better not to turn the lights down. I think it's better because just because those tabi'un, some of them did that, it doesn't make it authentic. But when you find that major people did that, scholars of Al-Islam, then you need to relax on the way you describe the next person who's doing it. You need to relax the way you look at the next person who's doing it. If scholars like Makhul, Luqman ibn Hakim, these people from the Tabi'in, if they can do something like that, then you need to relax. 
some of our relatives who do the shabbarat. Shabbarat is an innovation. But some of those people, they didn't do shabbarat, but they did special things on this night. Things that were not legislated from the Quran and the Sunnah. Doesn't make it okay. I'm just saying, hey, hey, hey. These people had knowledge. And they were living in a time when knowledge was widespread. In a place where they were ulama. And they did that. These people right now, our relatives, our people, we're living in a time of ignorance. And they have no knowledge. So all I'm saying is, we have to eradicate it. We have to talk against it. We have to educate the people about it. Try to get rid of it. But... Describing people as mubtadi, Describing people, they don't love the sunnah. So anyway, in this book of Al-Imam Ibn Rajab, rahimahullah ta'ala, in the month of Rajab, in the month of Rajab, Rajab is one of the four sacred months in Al-Islam. He mentioned that some of the salaf used to do this and do that and do this. They used to fast in this month from the companions. Umar, Abdullah ibn Umar, and other people. One of the things that he mentioned was, in the month of Rajab, the kuffar of Quraysh, the kuffar of Quraysh, before Al-Islam, they used to make dua in the month of Rajab. They used to make dua to Allah who they believed in. But they believed in the other gods along with Allah. And their dua used to be accepted. So the great scholar of Al-Islam, and imam Abu Bakr ibn Abi Dunya, who wrote in every single thing, he has a book that he called it, Mustajabu Dua. Those people whose dua was accepted. And he mentioned a chapter of the people in Jahiliya who were well known as being people whose dua was accepted. And that's not anything strange. It's not strange. Because the Prophet mentioned, Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallam, Ittaqu da'watin madhloom. When kana kafir. When kana kafira. For in nuhu laysa baynahu wa bayn Allah hijab. In another narration, Beware of the dua of the oppressed, even if he is a kafir. Because between his dua and Allah, there is no partition. So if a person oppresses a kafir, and the kafir makes dua against that person, Allah may accept the dua of the kafir. And then we have the ultimate example, the clear example, and that's the example of Iblis who made kibr in the Jannah. And Allah Ta'ala mentioned to him, فَهْبُتْ مِنْهَا فَمَا كَانَ لَكَ تَتَكَبَّرَ فِيهَا Get out of the Jannah. You're expelled. And it was not for you. It was impermissible for you to have kibr in the Jannah. He had kibr in the Jannah when Allah told him and the malaika bow down to Adam. He didn't bow down. Allah expelled him. Before getting out of Jannah, he said, رَبِّي أَنْذِرْنِي إِلَى يَوْمَ يُبَعَثُونَ Iblis made a dua, oh my Lord, give me respite. Give me some time. Don't destroy me. Give me some time until the day in which they are raised up. Allah Ta'ala mentioned to him, innaka min al-mundhareen. You are from those who have been given respite. So Allah answered the dua of Iblis. He answered the dua of Iblis and he is the problem of all sins and disobedience. Then we have on the other hand, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the best of Bani Adam, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sa'altu rabbi thalatha fa'atani thinnatain wa mana'ani wahida. I made dua and I asked Allah for three things. Allah gave me two. He answered the dua in two things and he didn't give me the third one. I asked Allah to not allow my ummah to be destroyed by a flood. And Allah gave me that. He answered it. I asked Allah not to allow my ummah to be destroyed by a drought where all of them die as a result of no food. He gave me that. وَسَأَلْتُ رَبِّ أَن لَا يَجْعَلْ بَأْسَهُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ شَدِيدٍ فَمَنَعْنِيهَ فَمَنَعْنِيهَ I asked Allah to stop them from fighting each other. Don't allow my ummah to have internal strife, fighting, hatred. But he didn't give me that. So if you look in the Muslim world right now, we destroy our countries, we fight each other. We allow the non-Muslims to fight each other. I think the problem in Palestine can be easily dealt with if the Arabs, the Muslims, just decided to come together and they could put a stop to that, bi in, in in a week's time or less than a week, bi easily. The leaders of the Muslim countries, the Arab countries, they could put a stop to it. 
but everybody is doing his own particular thing in order to get his own benefit. Don't look that far to the Muslim world. Just look at ourselves right here. We don't love each other, and a lot of that leads to altercations. So the point is, the dua of an evil person, a non-Muslim, it can be accepted, and the dua of the wali from the awliya, bal a nabi from the anbiya, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim ajma'een, it may be rejected. And that's because the dua is the property of Allah. He does with it what he wants to do with it, and it's not for anyone to put his foot in that realm and say things like, Allah won't accept your dua because you're doing this and you're doing that. There are many things a person can do that can cause his dua not to be accepted. But if you see someone doing that thing, you can't go and say, Wallahi, Allah won't accept your dua because that's not your job, that's not your business, and you have no knowledge about that. Yarhamakullah. Okay, Akhwani, if you brothers have any questions, inshallah, you can put your questions forward. إذن نكتفي بهذا القدر ونسأل الله تعالى يوفقنا وإياكم لما يحب ويرضى سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وتوب إليك. إخواني we done we finish with uh, the أحكام of رمضان. If you brothers have like any suggestions, you let me know about those suggestions that you want us to do something uh, from new starting uh, after you know next week. So بإذن الله you can bring that uh, those suggestions tomorrow. All right. Abu Ismail, where's, where's, where's the brother? Where's he from? He's British, right? He's not from Africa, huh? He's from Africa. <laughs>